Alright, it's finally heating up and almost summer. Feel like it's a good time to head down to the beach. <laughs> Fix your water, guys. Bill and I said it once, he has said it again, and we don't have very long to fix it. Fix the ocean, people. Yes, this is a PSA to clean up water pollution, and the only reason why is because of Shark Tale being underwater. Literally the only connection to this video. But realistically, stop polluting the planet you live on. It's already suffering enough as it is. Shark Tale, a movie about a fish that discovers fame, especially gotten through lies, is not nearly as rewarding as you might think. It also had a shark mafia and lots of pop culture stuff, but aside from that, there's not much to this movie. I will argue that the comparison between Fighting Nemo in this movie shouldn't be made at all. While doing research about this movie, you don't know how many times I've seen that. They are not the same movie at all. This movie hasn't exactly been seen with much of a positive light when compared to other movies in general and even when compared to other DreamWorks movies. However, license-based games have a chance of being better than the original source material. So today we'll be looking at the Shark Tale video game to see which one ended up being better. The story is the same as the movie but told through interviews with some characters. These interviews do fit the aesthetic of Shark Tale, whatever strange aesthetic that is. Wait a minute. The story is essentially told through multiple flashbacks or retelling since it's explained through a news interview with Barry B. Benson. Ironically, this game came three years before the B-movie game. Ignoring that atrocity, these interviews made the story out to be rather boring. To be fair, the story of someone trying to rise to fame and realizing how you get there and what you do with it is important isn't anything new, so that probably has something to do with it. But even then, I couldn't care too much about a lot of it since I felt there wasn't enough interaction between characters through cutscenes. The interviews don't even have any funny moments in them, which could have made up for them being boring at the very least. All that can really be said is that the movie did a much better job handling the story, which is a no-brainer sometimes, but again, the story made it out to be so boring that I just never had much of a reason to care. Transitions between levels are newspaper headlines, which fits the rise to fame theme of Shark Tale. Even the pause menu is like this too. The characters and environments all look amazing, honestly. Everything seems nice and detailed and there's a good amount of color to everything which makes things stand out among each other. Also, just like in the movie, there are knockoffs of actual brands, specifically Burger King and Coca-Cola, which is a nice touch regardless of whether you've seen the movie or not. By the way, when failing some missions, there are special cutscenes for them. To my knowledge, this is the first game that I've reviewed that has done that, and I appreciate that since not many games go through the effort of adding this. Even with new releases, there aren't too many games like that. The music is great for the most part. Since Shark Tale is known for its hip-hop and rap, it's safe to assume that there's a good amount of that in this game too. There of course are original tracks for this game, but there are also some copyrighted songs, which I'm not going to use because YouTube would probably kill me. Some songs are You Can't Touch This, Bad Boys, and Three Little Birds. You might not know that last one based off of his name. Well, don't worry about a thing. Every little thing is gonna be alright. If you didn't get that joke, you have never heard that song in your life. The music isn't always happy and hip hop -y though, because when it wants to set a creepy mood of going through a sunken cruise ship filled with security guards and sharks that could kill you at a moment's notice, or running away from something that could kill you instantly, they make sure to set the mood. Almost no voice actors reprise their original roles. The only one that does get their original voice back is Crazy Joe. Now, I can imagine that it's hard to get back a lot of the voices like Will Smith, Angelina Jolie, Jack Black, and more because money is a very valuable and precious thing, and stuff like this isn't uncommon. But all the replacements don't sound at anything like the original voices. And keep in mind, that's not to say that they're bad voice actors. They actually do pretty good jobs, and some of them have gone to play some pretty familiar characters in plenty of shows. But the instant characters speak, you can greatly tell that they aren't the same. Everyone sounding off is quite jarring, but it's not something that will hinder the game by a lot. Especially if you haven't even seen the movie to begin with, you wouldn't even know the original voices. Before every level, you're given your mission for what you do in said level. There are also a bonus and elite mission for every single level in the game, which are essentially challenges you can do to try and complete. 
These challenges revolve around collecting pearls, defeating certain enemies, or objectives that pertain to that particular level. Completing any of these missions give you fame. The more fame you get, the higher your rank will be. I'll explain what that's for later because it doesn't mean anything right now. There are five different types of gameplay that a level can be made for. In Adventure, you swim around in a 2D side-scroller environment and, well, adventure through the area. If you want to go fast, you can dash or double dash to go even faster, though I think it's a little bit harder to show the difference between the two through video, so you kinda have to trust me on that. Oscar also has a dash attack that can be used to defeat enemies and break objects. Some objects, like pearls, have a ring that appear around them. By swimming around the object and completing the ring, you can collect the object. You also have an action button which does a variety of things. You can use it as signposts to change the direction you go in, hide behind objects, usually during stealth missions, enter holes to go into other areas, and at doors to visit them and eat, which restores your health. They won't give you more after that first visit though. Then there's Chase where you have to dodge incoming attacks from an enemy. That's really it, there's not much to these. For race, you have to use some kind of fish to go through an area and either beat the person you're racing against or complete some other objective in a certain amount of time. When using these fishes, you can dodge to take out enemies and move to the side, and power slide to get a boost of speed. Dance is kind of similar to Dance Dance Revolution, where you have to press the arrows in time with the music. There are also multi-arrows which require you to press the corresponding buttons to hit them. And I'm not talking about the directional pad, I'm talking about the buttons on the other side of the controller. But don't worry, you can use a dance pad if you have that lying around for some reason. Lastly, there is fighting, where you have to use weak and strong attacks to defeat an opponent, like the Shark Slayer that you claim to be, while avoiding their attacks. Oscar also has super moves, which has a bit of a startup, so to gain the time to use them, you have a combo meter which, when filled, stuns your opponent for a short time, meaning you can wail on them with your attacks. All the money and fame you get through the missions are used for the extra shop. A certain amount of money and fame is required before you can purchase any of the extras. The adventure gameplay controls very well. I was a little concerned about how it would end up being since my experience with other games having underwater controls aren't exactly great, but since this game was 100% underwater focused, I guess that allows for it to be much better than games that only have a partial focus on it. It being 2D might also have something to do with that, but it controls well regardless. Even the differences between a dash, double dash, and an attack are well done. There's also a map for these segments that you can look at for most areas, so getting lost isn't an issue either. This game is also pretty linear in design for the most part, but again, the map is a nice addition that I'm not gonna bash. While the controls for the adventure type doesn't evolve further than where it begins, the world around you changes the situation and how you play keeping this style from being boring. Sometimes you have to defeat bosses, sometimes you have to stay away from enemies, sometimes you have to stay behind objects to avoid getting caught. It's all very fun and avoids being repetitive. The dance minigames weren't boring either, is actually one of the best things about this game. The reason is because they aren't stupidly easy. Most games that have a minigame like this make them really easy, which makes them feel like they just drone on until the end. But in this game, since they are an actual challenge, I got a lot more enjoyment out of them than I expected. In fact, as a whole, this game really isn't easy. The challenges that some levels have are really difficult unless you know what you're doing. And this does give a sense of working towards your fame as these missions apply to that gauge. And these challenges also give some replay value, especially if you want to get some of the extras in the game. And speaking of which, you actually get a lot more than I thought you would in a license-based game. You can get some small snippets from the movie, though they don't have any audio in them, concept art from the game and the movie, and you can even get the storyboards for levels and animations of the characters in here. I don't know of many games that include viewings of animations as unlocks. The fighting gameplay is super sluggish. In almost every fight, it felt like dealing damage took a long time to do, especially because the enemy would randomly sometimes let you get only one hit in before it started attacking again. They were just slow, clunky, and lasted longer than they should've. Also, the ending levels are stupidly difficult. Now, I know I gave praise for the game being hard earlier, however, there is a fine line when it comes to being fair and unfair. By the time you get to the end of the game, it feels like you can't make a single mistake or else it's all over and there's almost no way to bounce back from it. Due to how most of the end levels are designed, those being the fighting, race, and chase types, you have to redo the entire level if you end up failing. And with how unforgiving some of these levels are, you're more than likely going to repeat them quite a few times.
After dying, you don't just simply restart. You have to see the newspaper transition and mission screen again before continuing where you were, which is pointless since you should already know what you're doing by now and it just wastes time. This isn't something that affects the overall gameplay, especially if you are really good at the game. The only times where you would really have to worry about this a lot is at the very end of the game. This game ended up being much better than I thought it would be. The aspects of the game that are good are very fine tuned and incredibly fun, however there were still some things that brought it down for me. That's probably because there were a bunch of different gameplay types, so some were bound to be good and others unfortunately couldn't hold up to that same level. Plus the difficulty spike at the end of the game made it harder to enjoy the game as a whole. If the fighting was done better and the final parts of the game were at least a tad bit easier, I'd be open to call this one of the best license based games I've reviewed. I will say though that, in a general sense, this game is way better than it deserves to be. What's going on my fellow residents, it's me to Frozen Cavern and thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Now one thing I do want to say is that we are very very close to 1000 subscribers which thank you guys so much we're in the final stretch now it's just about 100 more subscribers and then it's at 1k which is very surprising especially given that a few months ago I was at around 700 or something like that so again thank you guys for all the support you guys have been giving me recently it has been amazing and we're almost there but one thing I do want to say is that this game was kind of requested from someone along with other games that this person wanted me to do and I'd be down to take requests but I just don't know how to take those requests so if there is a way for you guys to actually give me said requests then just let me know I guess but regardless again I I am very much open to request, but in case you have not already, make sure you guys go down into the description below, as that is where all of my social medias are. My Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Discord are all in the description, and all of those are ways of making sure of whenever I upload a video, have an update for certain things, and other things along those lines. And if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as share this video out with your friends and family, but until the next video, take care.